Cool. Hi, everybody. Today is Tuesday, July 4th. This is the SIG Testing Weekly Meeting, and I am your host, Aaron Kirkenberger. This is being publicly recorded and will be posted on YouTube forever and ever for all posterity. Um, so on today's agenda, uh, I just wanted to cover some administrivia real briefly. Uh, Beta wanted to talk a little bit about our vision for blocking pre-submits going forward, loosely speaking, and I want to give the remainder of the time to talk about testing out of tree testing for providers, both cloud and cluster API, just to sort of understand where the discussion's at and where we would like it to go. Um, so administrivia. Uh, Historically, I've been the guy taking notes during the meeting, and I've also been trying to talk, and I can't really walk and talk and type at the same time. So I've noticed other SIGs kind of have an ongoing uh, note taker role. My plan going forward is to just sort of ask for somebody to fill that, or maybe if somebody wants to volunteer to do it ahead of time, I'm super open to that. You will give shout outs, kudos, and tons of praise by doing this. Plus, you know, you have the editorial voice for all time. Um, so um, another thing I wanted to share real briefly, I uh, will share my screen, is that uh, we're, uh, we have milestones in the test info repo. Um, they're here. Uh, I have milestones for this release cycle, for next release cycle, kind of our overall goals for this year, and someplace we can punt sort of overall goals for next year as we start thinking longer term. Um, historically, we haven't been the greatest at uh, effectively bucketing everything into this to try and create a roadmap. Um, one thing I did to hopefully make it a little bit easier this time is add support for the slash milestone command, which I think I tried to use to punt everything into here. Let's see if I did that. Um, yeah, so you can use the slash milestone command. Um, in order to actually use the milestone command, um, I'm navigating live to the help on the fly just to demonstrate this here. Uh, it says you've got to be a member of this Kubernetes milestone maintainers team. Um, I don't have the document handy that describes how to get here, but basically you just have to email Kubernetes SIG contributor experience if you're not a member of this team um, and you can get added. Uh, so uh, it would be helpful. I'm going to try and go through and sort of scrub all of our issues going forward to see if I can kick stuff into 112 and 113. Um, but I'm also going to say like if we're not finding this useful as a group, if we're not like really using this ourselves, then maybe we should find some other way of just trying to call the shots before we take the shots or accept that we're, that's just not really how we operate. Um, but one of the reasons to do this might be it makes communicating status and what's going on to the rest of the community a lot easier than having to point them at arbitrary Google Docs that I keep forgetting about and I have to go search my Google Drive to figure out which one I've looked at most recently. Um, so there's that. Uh, I lost my place on the agenda, I apologize. I think the next thing was about uh, KubeCon Shanghai. Um, so first off, is anybody here, does anybody here know if they are going to KubeCon Shanghai or planning to go to KubeCon Shanghai? There's a joke about being kidnapped in there. <laughs> <laughs> and taken against your will to the convention, but. No Shanghai plans. I know I'm not planning to attend. <laughs> I probably will be there, I think. Yeah. Um, I know I submitted a talk, uh, but I don't know if that means I'm going or not. Uh, but there's a sort of a call out there for SIGs to do intro and deep dive sessions the same way we have done at other KubeCons. So it's the sort of thing that I prefer to use for more higher bandwidth discussions uh, amongst those of us who are really busy with stuff. Um, and I'm just wondering if anybody in the group would be interested in us doing that, um, or if anybody is interested in volunteering to do that. The deadline for submissions for these, well, the deadline for saying yes, we want to do it is tomorrow. That's why I'm asking today. 
I'm happy to do a like intro session, just walk through everything and asking like answer questions people have. Cool. Yeah, I think um, personally, I think something that is in flux right now, but could maybe be described a little bit later is like all of the layers and tools and stuff involved in uh, running it what actually happens when you run a job. I think we've done a pretty good job of communicating like prow and the infrastructure around kicking things off. But like, what are those things? What are the layers? What is this bootstrap? What are these pod utils? What are these scenarios? How much of that is getting mixed up right now, et cetera, et cetera. Um, might be an interesting topic. Um, okay. Uh, cool. So with that, I will hand off to Feta to talk a little bit about our vision for blocking pre-submits. Yeah, so, um, you know, I think one of the harder parts, you know, about jumping in, like there's sort of a desire, we have a lot of end-to-end -end flakes, but I think a challenging part for community members to participate in all of this is that um, you know, uh, people have varying accesses to be able to run end-to-end -end clusters, right? Like obviously people at Google, it's pretty easy to spin up a, you know, in-node cluster uh, and test that. Whereas, you know, if you are just some unassociated contributor, um, you know, you're probably not going to want to spend in dollars to debug some end-to-end uh, -end flake. Um, and so I think that you know, and also even for Googlers, or even if you do have access to GCP or AWS or whatever, uh, it is going to take a lot of time to, you know, spin up a full cluster. And so I sort of feel like a good, and then there's, you know, interesting initiatives like uh, Minikube and various Docker and Docker uh, things to try and, you know, fit um, a cluster inside of a, you know, local machine. And I guess I would like to try and, you know, drive, um, you know, oh, whatever, sort of throw out the proposal that the vision that we should have or I would like us to have is where we are trying to move all blocking tests, uh, which means, you know, the PR is good enough to merge, not necessarily that it's good enough to include in a release yet, um, but to sort of make all of the uh, merge blocking testing uh, fit inside a pod, or so, aka run locally on a person's machine. Um, and you know, right now that's not really fully, um, you know, possible, right? Most of our testing will use a, a VM of some sort, you know, and actually do testing on some place like GCE or AWS. Um, but you know, long term, I would like to move to where we we are a more hermetic solution, both so that it's faster and it's easier for people to, to debug. Um, well, when you say hermetic, I mean, it sounds like you mean portable. And I don't know that one is necessarily the same as the other, right? Like a pod right now is hermetic, but the, or an image is hermetic, but the idea that it can run anywhere would, would, it, would be, or with fewer dependencies would make it portable? Or, or, or am I misunderstanding it? Maybe I don't understand the meaning. Because you want it to be able to run someone's desktop versus just GCE or AWS, you don't want it to depend on certain resources available to Kubernetes running in particular locations. That that smacks of portability to me. Or again, what maybe sure. I'm missing? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I guess portability. Um, but yeah, I mean, but uh, yeah, I, I guess sure. I, I would say port. Uh, yeah, I guess I'm meaning, you know, something that's her hermetic in the sense of, uh, you know. I mean, but I mean, theoretically, you could imagine you have some sort of portable test that makes it, you know, run the same way on AWS and Azure and, you know, OpenShift or whatever. Uh, really, I, I'd like to sort of, you know, get to where we could have a uh, local cluster that passes conformance tests um, and that we can use that for testing, right? And so then it becomes like a provider specific, uh, you know, problem to make sure that, you know, there that the you know gcp cloud provider uh continues to pass conformance tests but we don't need to depend on um a particular cloud provider to validate the testing of the core kubernetes so i have wanted this for a very very long time and part of the testing commons stuff has been to provide basically an abstraction layer because there's many 
there's many solutions to that back end problem right now, and there's no unified one. If folks wanted to rally on creating a, a grand unified doc, whatever local up environment that actually uses the artifacts that we create uh, as to, to do the bootstrapping for the local cluster, then I would happily resource that uh, to help uh, because that is a common problem, not just for Google's testing infra, but for anybody who's doing anything in and around or with Kubernetes. So, I mean, I, I'm hearing from both, I mean, but I'm hearing from both of you, you know, maybe a focus on making it easy to take um, someone's, uh, I, yeah, I, I guess, I don't know. I, I sort of view those as, as two slightly different things, maybe, and maybe uh, that's just my mis mistake. Well, well let, let, let me. Of the, of the difference between trying to make it easy to run the same test on a local cluster and an AWS cluster and a, mm -hmm. you know, uh, GCP cluster, I think is slightly different from ensuring that the local cluster uh, has that capability in the first place. Yeah, so I think what confuses me is the word hermetic. I had to do a quick check on it, not to be pedantic. I mean, sealed, like, right, or airtight is what the, the traditional definition apparently is. And so I, I only know the word from the phrase hermetically sealed. But and, and this is where I think I get confused. Because something is sealed, I think of people not being able to reach in. I don't think of it meaning people can't, like the thing that sealed can't necessarily reach out and take advantage of, of resources. So it Let sounded like you don't want it to have external resources. And so the side effect would be portability. And again, maybe I just still don't understand, but when you bring up the other platforms as we don't want it to depend on these things, I, I kind of see what you're saying. You want any cluster to be able to run it. You don't necessarily want it to be able to run in any cluster. I, I guess through, you don't want to have the requirements of provisioning is the, is the thing that we're okay. trying to get at. The problem is provisioning. You don't want to be able to dedicate and have to set up a whole cluster across N resources. You want to be able to use a localized environment with the build artifacts for your local build, right? If I'm going to do a PR, I want to be able to run a test environment that's exactly like the test environment that would be run for the PR submission jobs. Because right now there's a huge difference between running a local test than from what is actually run on the PR submission blocking jobs. And that's always been the case. Right? It's not is that this something Scaffold is trying to attack? No. no. Hang on. Like okay. the world we don't want to live in is where every pull request to Kubernetes has to depend on a cluster spinning up in AWS, a cluster spinning up in GCE, a cluster spinning up in Azure, a cluster spinning up in some open stack cloud, a cluster spinning up in some VMware public cloud, right? Like that takes entirely too long. We just want something that passes most of the E2E tests that we care about. That's why we're Wait, talking you said about unit. Them. Now we're talking about E2E. No, I said uh, yeah, I'm talking E2E. I'm like, we don't want to have to wait an hour plus for a pull request to pass all of its tests. And so a lot of that time is spent dealing with provisioning in different cloud environments. Furthermore, when we're talking about hermetic, we're talking about like, we don't want to be subject to the relative humidity and barometric pressure of different cloud environments, which can okay. often cause test flakes. So we feel like if we can get faster, less flaky signal on pull request jobs going into core Kubernetes, that speeds up development velocity there. It then begs the question of how we accomplish sufficient coverage of cloud provider specific functionality in a way that can provide meaningful signal to different cloud provider implementations. Yeah. That can be done so, on time-based jobs versus PR blocking jobs. Right. Yeah, you, yeah. you had said blocking yeah. and I, I referenced unit, but yeah, you're right, ETE can be pre-submit blocking but there, yeah okay yeah so maria is you know leaving a com comment about uh putting it in two stages where the first stage you know runs locally and the second stage uh you know runs against all vendors and yeah i think that's you know uh exactly what we're sort of talking about with the caveat that you know uh you know maybe the idea is to consider something good enough to merge it passes all of our uh local tests and the i think part of this and the, the, the thing that doesn't exist right now, um, like for, I'm not exactly sure if Minikube is a conformant cluster or not, but I do know that, um, you know, it would be hard to run Minikube. I don't know if we could run 
we certainly can't run Minikube inside a Kubernetes pod. And I don't know whether we could run Minikube on a GCE VM. Yeah. You, you wouldn't be using the artifacts that you created. That's the problem. The problem with core Kubernetes and doing PR blocking jobs is you need to test the change modification that you made in the localized stand-up environment. The only thing that does that are like a customized DIN. And right. even, with, even with the DIN solutions that exist now, they're not customized, right? You want it to be the build artifacts for the right. change set that you're making. Correct? Right. Mm -hmm. So I like, perhaps I'm misspeaking for Eric, but I, I was hoping we could talk about this in terms of a framing of our North Star. Like this is the direction we want to head to, but we don't yet have that providerless, really fast cl uh, cluster implementation that would that we can use in lieu of all of these cloud things. Further, like we're talking about conformance and the full set of E2B tests that is run for every pull request is actually larger than conformance. And that's something that I would like to yeah. change the gap on. But like we'll have uh, somebody who's not here right now is trying to work on that kind of implementation, at which point it sounds like uh, Tim St. Clair, maybe we want to talk to you about resourcing how we could move forward with the sort of the specification thing you have in testing commons? And well, that's that's an interface layer above, but the SIG cluster lifecycle wants this desperately badly. Okay. Um, so we would happily engage in that effort. Okay. Yeah, um, it, yeah so yeah, definitely, yeah. Maybe it sounds like we should talk to uh, SIG cluster lifecycle, but I, I mean, I, I think potentially, I, I think maybe potentially some parts of, you know, can, conflict would be like there are useful things you know that are specific to you know GCP about like load you know the, the load balancer or something that you like we could potentially fake like a service uh, on a local cluster that's not going to be the same as how GCP uh, you know it actually runs on GCP but I think that's um, you know okay because theoretically we can either provide fakes and we still have all of the time-based testing that happens after merge Right, it's not like as soon as we merge a PR, we cut a release. Uh, there's lots of you know opportunity to do additional testing. We point to right now. But yeah, like it's we gonna should. be difficult to sell that though. I, I really do believe. I mean, the whole purpose of the effort I'm I'm leading is to provide the a vSphere environment for for that testing. And I could see people saying, well, we have no confidence once something's merged, even though there is gate gates like you said, and uh, before a release resources could have been reallocated and staffing could have changed because it looks like this, you know, is no longer an issue. Uh, so I, I'd be careful about how that gets divided up. I, I will agree though, that there does need to be a refactoring of testing overall. I've seen a lot of tests in the existing vSphere and the end tests that I think these one aren't necessary Two, aren't, ne they could be rewritten in such a way that they could work in a partitioned environment and not expect, a dedicated, you know, cluster. And that might be true for some other platforms as well. And, and lastly, let's not isolate the discussion to just the cloud provider. Cause like, I mean, with, you know, Tim's involved in it, cluster API is coming and there's also CSI, which is an important thing. So I think it's, it's for any out of tree really. So I, I want to get to the out of tree thing, but I don't think it necessarily can be solved within a 10 minute discussion, which is why I want to talk specifically about the cloud provider angle of it. For one thing. Okay. Cloud provider has a, a SIG dedicated to it. Mm -hmm. um, and secondarily, like, I think that would be a good place to, we already have in-tree implementations of cloud provider as well as out-of-tree implementations of cloud provider. That's gonna be the, like, we should tackle that problem. That's gonna give us the largest surface area and the broadest scope of use cases to make sure that we're, we're really capturing well. great requirements. That's literally what that document I produce is about. And then the, the first part is about that. And the second part is about the implementation that we designed to, to uh, solve that, at least at VMware. But yeah, it, it's all about how to handle the, the cloud provider, both in and out and what that process looks like over time. The, the traditional approach we take with post submit blocking stuff is we then say that that becomes like we, we abandon the world where post submits can block further submissions of code. Um, what, because it was really, really, it, it hurt everybody. It caused a lot of pain. Somebody's broken test would inflict pain upon the entire community and we couldn't seem to move with enough expediency to solve the problem. So we instead say that it blocks cutting releases. And so you could live in a world where 
we're merging PRs to make sure that sort of the core or nucleus of Kubernetes without a, pro a cloud provider is relatively functional. But then you can say that a release of Kubernetes can't go out the door until we've ensured that it works with such and such cloud providers, such and such cluster providers, yada, yada, yada. But we need to see some sort of demonstrated level of competency and responsiveness uh, when it comes to tests that generate reliable signal and uh, people actually fixing the tests when they break or paying attention to test failures, um, which historically hasn't been super great. It, right now, the release process kind of relies on a single person holding a CI signal rule to go around and nag people as a human. And that's really not sustainable if we start talking about expanding this matrix of different cloud providers and cluster providers and what have you as blocking a release. So we've sure, got to find like a reliable channel to communicate to these people. We've got to hold them to some kind of uh, SLOs, whatever you want to call it, on responsiveness um, to, to move forward with that. And that's just sort of how it would bake into the existing release process. I'm not sure about brainstorming out of tree stuff, but. No, I mean, I think one of the things I call out in that doc is the fact that there are E to E tests in tree for vSphere, but they're not configured to be run in any type of capacity. Second of all, I'd call out OpenStack for making us all look bad because they're ahead of the curve on all of all of this. But so, I mean, one thing would be to configure those existing tests so that they are run and, and they do provide some type of signal and in some, like in a conformance capacity, perhaps. Mm -hmm. um, there are also tests that are blocking, but they're all organized under pre-submit, like pull Kubernetes pre-submit and the Basel, but they're, they're not aligned with any specific provider, except they are. By, ver by virtue of where they exist. They just don't show up in test grid as aligned with that provider. You wouldn't even know that's there unless they fail most likely. I'm not sure I follow that. Class. So like there are unit tests in the vSphere cloud provider entry. Those show up under, I think it's uh, like uh, Kubernetes pre-submit blocking under that Basel test job, which is the hundreds, like all the unit tests in Kubernetes entry, right? Mm -hmm. those, those show up there, but they, so they don't show up aligned to a particular cloud provider, even though they are aligned to our cloud provider, because they, they're not configured to show up in test grid that way. So I'm saying like there is some type of signal coming from a cloud provider currently that's pre-submit blocking, but it's just not visualized in the test grid in that capacity at the moment. Uh, right? Those are just unit tests, I think. And I'm not sure that we have the greatest mechanism right now to tie a specific unit test name to a specific sig name. But you can yeah. say by virtue of the file, the directories that they're in, they're owned by certain things. Well, sure, we're, kind just... of, we're kind of like veering wildly off the the path okay. of trying to focus the conversation towards the North Star. So yes, I love the North Star. Let's do. Let's all walk off into the sunset together. Uh, yeah, I veered, that's I veered off the path of the North Star because I think this <laughs> dovetails into into the question Andrew's talk on like how do we what patterns do we want to follow for in tree and out of tree provider implementations and testing going forward right because right. this this immediately kind of kicks off our, our north star is to kick all providers out of the critical path of merge blocking code so we still have to solve that problem somewhere you can you can you um you know, people who may not be familiar north star you just mean the guiding purpose yes thank you so isn't the purpose of federated testing meant to solve the cloud provider problem is so long as the release folks use it as a signal to eye poke someone as part of the release process. Yes, we can do that. We currently like nobody submits their test results in a, in a way that that could be done right now. But yes. yeah, but that, that was the intention though, right? Right, yeah. The, the the intention was, you know, to have people add their results to the release, you know, one dot whatever yes. uh, for, you know, their cloud provider and have that show up in test grid and allow the release team to, you know, look at those and make sure they're passing and contact, which I think is still, you know, a viable uh, option. And we've had people experiment with that, but for whatever, you know, I think it's just, you know, for whatever reason that that hasn't seemed to have uh, stuck as a, yep. um you know, aside from, yeah. So yeah, you're right. That's that's an approach we'd like to, in the world where we don't have cloud providers blocking pre-submits, that's the approach we'd want to take. And and, and the, the other the other thing, I, you know, I, I think specifically the thing we want to avoid is, uh, you know, making it to where I need to 
Like if we have a vSphere unit test, that seems fine, or at least more fine to me than if we need to spin up a vSphere cluster or we need to spin up a GCP cluster. You know, because like uh, we, we spend a lot of time, you know, not merging PRs because maybe some aspect of GCP for whatever reason flakes around, you know, taking too long to create a load balancer or we forgot to clean up some resource or uh, something and uh, it's very hard to reproduce and adds a lot of flakiness that I think would be best dealt with um, as, you know, on, on the release level rather than uh, the person who is making a totally unrelated change um, in their PR. Well, let me ask, let me ask a question about that. So I, I don't want to deviate from the North Star and, and I, to bring up unit tests again, but the ones that are there, and I, I wasn't involved in any of them, but they, they use the vCenter simulator. So I think the people, the way that they categorize the two between unit and end to end, they thought unit should not have any external dependencies to depend on real hardware. Um, it sounds like though that you're kind of leaning towards okay with with some type of faking and simulation. So it may be the case, at least in, in this particular instance, you could recategorize some of those as, as end to end, or is am I, but you want a standard faker that isn't dependent upon a particular platform or? I mean, I, you know, I think maybe that's too detailed. I mean, for the, yeah, I, I think fakes are going to have to be, you know, if there is some technology, you know, if there is some piece of uh, functionality you want to validate that, um, you know, on a PR pre-merge basis, uh, that you're either going to have to provide a fake or use a real cluster, I, I think, yeah, the, the idea would be to have a fake. But I think like okay. when I when I think of end to end, I think of like separate processes actually being spun up and different services being talked to. When I think of unit tests, I think of like just mock implementations yeah. adjacent to the code. And in the world where like that gets the VMware cluster, cloud provider gets split out of tree, like that's VMware well, unit tests and then end yeah, but you can do that in two ways. I, I mean, in just a Jinko run, you could spin up in memory that simulator you could spin it up as a separate process as a remote endpoint right that that's why i was suggesting you know focusing on the pod right because you could have one container is your mini yeah but i thought we didn't want to actually spin up clusters i was confused i'm trying to can you define what the end to end test is in in this case like what qualifies as that and then i, I don't want to spins up a cluster runs tests against it collects artifacts tears the cluster down we it, okay. kicked out of it very it verifies the behavior of the cluster from the API's perspective, yeah. running actual binaries on on the on the artifacts that were published. Guys, I really apologize for ending early, but we are getting kicked out of our room. So, um, <laughs> I told you I'm Matt Damon, man. I said this last week. <laughs> Matt, it's Matt Damon on Jimmy Kimmel. Uh, so let's I'll touch take, base with you in Slack. Yeah, yeah, let's take this discussion up on Slack. Thanks, everybody. Thank you.